Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, this is Eric Principi here for Faster Humans. So, uh, to have a special, special guest today, Stephanie. Oh, then she path already. So she's live with us, and I'm gonna go ahead and leave her a little wife. And this is a, a live broadcast that we're gonna be doing together. And looking forward to uh, to make sure this your lady. All right, I just sent the invitation for Stephanie. Stephanie McGarrigal. I hopefully I'm saying her last name right. Stephanie's just jumping in. How you doing, Stephanie? Hi, doing good. Super excited, super pumped about just uh, having you here, uh, this live broadcast. Uh, thank you so much for actually taking the time to uh, doing this with us and, and, and just kind of like um, last minute, because you know what, one of the things, you know, when I normally don't do this as far as, you know, live broadcast, but um, I do it with a certain other uh, podcasters that do have, they do intermediate fasting, fasting and stuff like that. So, but welcome to to the podcast. This is going to be translated. This is my first time actually translating from video to audio. So this is going to be pretty exciting for me. So kind of, you know, the first person doing this. So introduce yourself for everyone here, the Fasted Human community. Go ahead. Well, this is my first time doing an Instagram live with somebody. So yes. that's exciting. <laughs> um, I'm Stephanie McGarrigal. I live in Eastern Canada. So huh. I've been complaining about the heat here, but it's probably a lot hotter where you are. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm somebody who spent basically my whole life very overweight, mm -hmm. very obese. Um, and something just clicked with me in 2017, where eating low carb and intermittent fasting happened accidentally but really naturally my mm -hmm. body responded really nicely to it and i became a fasted human and here i am <laughs> almost three years later and fasting and low carb and fitness are things that are just very much part of my daily life now yeah and i cannot imagine going back to how the previous 39 years of my life were yeah so so Take us a little back because I know that 2017, what was that tipping point for you? Because I know you have two children and, and you share that in your post and right. a little bit of, it of where that transition happened. So early in 2017, my kids were really still babies. They were not mm -hmm. one and not three. So babies. And uh, the year started really, really rough. I mm -hmm. have a husband who struggles with mental illness. Mm -hmm. So the year started with him running away. Mm -hmm. And then not long after that, I broke my foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had unresolved mobility that was just not getting found out why doctors couldn't figure it out. Medication wasn't helping. Physiotherapy wasn't happening. And then a month after having a broken foot, I had a blood clot in the same leg of where I broke my foot mm. yeah. and um, I went to the doctor and they thought it was just the muscles were sore from walking funny it yeah. wasn't it was a blood clot and in massaging my leg I actually released the blood clot from my leg and I had severe bilateral pulmonary embolisms and I was in the hospital for five days I almost yeah. died wow. and I was sent home at 330 pounds on blood thinners, mm. still with a broken foot, still yeah. with unresolved mobility, but now I couldn't even take Advil for the inflammatory pain because of the blood thinners. Yeah. So you could say there was about six months from then until I kind of woke up where everything was a fog. Um, I, I mean, I had no quality of life. I was 330 pounds. I had no movement. It was terrible. My kids were starting to become more active and I could do nothing. Like I could just do nothing but yeah. sit on a bench. And so September came and I just got so sick of everything and not being able to move. I couldn't get my own shoes on. I couldn't do anything. And something clicked. I had remembered that a doctor had diagnosed me as celiac. So mm -hmm. um, a few years prior 
And I remembered that as part of that process, going more of a paleo eating had resolved a lot of inflammatory pain. And it sort of all came back to me. So yeah. two, preg two pregnancies had stood in the way of that information and where I had ended up in 2017. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, it's like I literally had an awakening. I said, yeah. enough. I can't do this anymore. It's got to be the food. It's not drugs. Nothing is working. Nobody can tell me what's wrong. Yeah. I just did an about face. I just changed directions completely in my life. I woke up and I started cooking cabbage and bacon. And I said, okay, no more grains, no more sugar. Mm -hmm. And wow. then naturally fell into an intermittent fasting schedule. And yeah. then started uh, swimming at all at the same day. Yeah. And, and within two weeks, I could start pulling my leg back and I could start getting my socks on. Within a month, yeah. I was off my first prescription. Within three months, I was down 50 pounds. Everything was coming back, not only coming back to normal, but surpassing what normal had been for a very long time. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. It's like you you went through a transition to an actually kind of fall into intermittent fasting and and actually kind of work your way towards just making little changes every single day. Um, who was your who was the person who actually that uh, inspired more and so kind of like the person that, or people that you follow? Because we are on Instagram, right? We are constantly you know checking these amazing results and. But what 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 motivate you most? Because obviously your children, because I did it obviously for my for mine, right? I have four boys, and and I, at the same time I just want to lead by example. But mm -hmm. what was that the thing that that you say? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna follow this person. Start following. How did that did that make any difference now? Yeah, it's kind of um, you know how sometimes you get on Instagram or on YouTube and you start going down funny trails. And one thing leads to another person, to another topic. And fasting, um, actually fasting goes way back for me. Mm -hmm. The longest fast I ever did uh, was in 1997 for 25 days. And so fasting for a healing and spiritual aspect wasn't new to me. So I had some people I sort of followed in that sense. Yeah. Uh, but I, I came upon Dr. Jason Fung through the Diet Doctor website originally and yes. it was actually just by chance because a family member who thinks this is all crazy talk was making fun of that website and i had yeah. never heard of it and so i said oh what's well, this diet doctor website yeah that led me to dr jason fung which led me to some of his videos about insulin and leptin and ghrelin and then i bought yeah. his book the obesity code and <laughs> yeah. then i bought the book the complete guide to intermittent fasting well then that led me back to instagram so who's this jimmy moore guy so i started following yeah. Jimmy Moore, and then uh tristan on primal edge health and thomas delauer and dr yeah Barry. and it's just it kind of steamrolled from there yes and then yes. it would come back to the fasting method which at the time was called the idm program yeah um, but it kept coming back to jason fung it seemed to always yeah. come back to jason <laughs> fung yes um, but the, but there's so there's so many people. I mean, Dr. Eric Westman, Adam, Dr. Adam Nally. Um, like, there's just so many people who have such a wealth of fasting information, but also yeah. really different. And I'll tell you, um, a lot of people I find in the United States and Canada are still not necessarily following him as much yet. But somebody who's incredible, his name is Scott Murray. Okay. And his account is called Good Life theory so he's in the uk and he actually wrote a book just this past year called uh fasting mother nature's game changer and he's brilliant he's yeah. like, super brilliant and so good life theory has also become an account and a person scott who i, I interact with because he fasts every single day and she does works so well for him and that's been another yeah. Interesting thing. I try to to watch, you know, how that goes. But so many people. It's like bunny trails. You can just follow yeah. them all day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's true. And I and you know, it's it's 
it's funny you say that because that's that's how actually I got into intermittent fasting. Fasting in 2017, November 2017, I was already I already has lost a specific amount of weight and so and so forth. But but it actually, I was listening to another podcast, and then Dr. Jason Fong was actually invited to that to the podcast. And it was interesting to listen to him and all the stuff that you know he has gone through as a doctor and how to you know he he fell into this whole you know all mindset of uh, how do he was thought of just teaching or knowing the fact that he kind of sort of was lying to his to his clients and he right. he felt such uh, the consciousness and just knowing that he wanted to do the right thing and just you know went to uh to this whole discovery and think that that's what he's doing i helping so many people even you know you find it on youtube and everything's for free and everything is there yeah. so you can be able to uh, not get more knowledge out of it we have a question by kimball fasting kimball fasting is from the uk uh, which schedule do you fall into? Actually, she has a question for you. Okay. I would say like 95% of the time, my natural rhythm ends up somewhere between 18 hours fasted, six hour eating window, mm -hmm. or 20 hours fasted with a four hour eating window. And I typically don't eat my first meal until around noon or 1 p.m. Yeah. And I try to stop eating by six o'clock regardless. And a lot of yeah. that also is because of the gym. I don't want to have a full belly and go work out and evenings <coughs> work out the best for my schedule for the gym because of my kids. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I can, I, yeah, I completely understand, understand what you're saying because yeah, definitely you don't want to go to the gym actually be it, you know, getting on into the crazy workouts because sometimes it's just, it's, it's painful. You're going to have a full stomach and then, you know, yeah, I mean, work. If, like if I'm going to do something like Aquafit or something like that, I don't mind eating later, but if I'm going to go, and lift weights or do anything strenuous like a hit workout if i eat any closer than three hours i would say to a workout it just does not feel good <laughs> yeah all right so guys and as so you guys have here on instagram we have a little future was we can be able to share um that before and after and, and take us a little bit back on that before and after and i want to share the hairs on the screen and um <clears throat> take us a little bit back and and, and tell us a little uh, uh what well, how do you, when you look back, would you, would you say to yourself, this is not going to never happen? Or, or do you, when you look back, you'd be like, man, where, where is this going to take me? The journey is amazing because, you know, you, the pictures, two different people. But at the same time, you have this thing is where you can say, and say, you know what? I fucking did it. I fucking did it. And then it's just like, you know, and, 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 and everybody's pumped because when they see, everybody can see this picture. It's like, you know, I can do this too. You know, well, I honestly, one thing, oh, there's my cat. One thing I will often tell people, especially very obese women, because they tend to feel the most hopeless, I find. Actually, really, anyone who's severely obese is, seriously, if I can do it, I really believe that anybody can. Because um, some people, I think, spend a lot of their life in a fasting and, not a fasting, sorry, a diet culture and diet mentality and I really don't think I did so when I see that picture of myself in that blue see-through dress which by the way that was a 5x plus size thing dress thing <laughs> and I remember wearing it saying this is see-through but I don't care I'm gonna wear this um, and I was at my my niece's dad was getting married that summer and um, I see that picture now and I look at it and I say, yeah, like I know that was me and that wasn't a fake smile. It was a beautiful wedding and it was a beautiful day, but I also remember feeling like the odd man out. There's another photo from that day where I'm standing next to the bride and I feel like a house next to her because she's not even a teeny tiny person and yet next to her I look like this wall. And it just blows my mind to think that in not even three years, what can happen and you know i never did think it would happen and i don't even think it was a matter of oh i keep trying and it's not happening yeah. i just didn't try i didn't i didn't ever really try and i remember my mom years ago saying to me if you lose a hundred pounds you and i will go on a trip we'll go on a cruise we'll go somewhere and i kind of would laugh because i, I don't that, like what did that look like you know to lose a hundred pounds, like you read about that in Women's Day magazines, and you see that in the grocery store lineup, and 
that was never going to be me. I couldn't have pictured it. And then when it happened, it was like, well, holy shit. It's been nine yeah. months and I've lost a hundred pounds. Like what? What is my trip? <laughs> well, and the crazy thing is it was supposed to happen. And then I had breast surgery and then it was, okay, well, it's going to happen in 2020. And then COVID happened. And yeah, well, <laughs> it's still but, going to happen someday, but. Well, of course, of course, this, this, this is, this is like a, like, like you, you said to yourself, it's like, well, we have, we have more in, 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 uh, in, in, in the future that we have to think about because I think that this is teaching us a lot in regards to COVID. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the fact how you how you're dealing with COVID and and now that you find your your schedule to fit in for you. Because a lot of people, you know, they stuck at home, then you you know that some yeah. of them, you know, they can go to the gym and so on and so forth. What would you say to somebody who is right now is watching this and say, listen, you know, back, you know, three years ago I decided to take a take a leap of faith and and, and go for something that definitely is going to make me feel better in the yeah. long term. I mean, I've had coaches in the past who have really tried to um, bring it home to me, the concept of <clears throat> if you just pick one healthy habit at a time yeah. to work on, that's enough. And because for me, an area that I struggle not with just food, but in general, is a very much an all or nothing mm -hmm. behavior. And yeah. so... I'm somebody who's like, no, I'm going to change my food and I'm going to change my fasting and I'm going to change my activity today. Yeah. And then you can only do that for so long and you kind of hit a wall. And so, you know, um, there are going to be times in our life where maybe we have, well, my mother right now has a broken ankle, a severely bad break. So the rest of her yeah. summer has just completely been derailed. Yeah. <laughs> but she can still mind her eating, you know? And, um, and likewise, I had major surgery in January, and so I was already kicked out of the gym routine on January 17th, and I no sooner hit the six-week mark, and then the world shut down, and the gyms shut down, and yeah. you know, it's, it's really hard when our lives get derailed, whether it's from a pandemic, or surgery, or finances, yeah. it happens, yeah. and um, I mean, here in Canada, we get bad winters and the gyms will close because the roads are ice and so you know like <laughs> yeah it's not a matter of saying oh the gym is closed we'll get your lazy ass outside and go for a walk okay but there's uh 14 inches of snow right now and i might die <laughs> yeah so <laughs> maybe well, not well there's no excuse here in florida i tell you as much because i i i live in florida and it's super hot right now and uh, i'll i can tell you one thing I got to get the workout early in the morning because there's no way past nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, it is impossible to work out because it is, it is in the inferno outside. But I will tell you this much, you know, um, what, what nutrition plan are you following? You're more like a keto person or something that you kind of sort of like a stick around with just or specific things. So you're just a regular, your, your nutrition intake is just regular. What do you follow? So keto happened by accident. Yeah. Um, my mom is old school, like pre Atkins days. And so when I started to eat sort of paleo ish, yeah, she, she kind of said, well, why don't you take your carbs lower and you'll be in ketosis? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? And so that <laughs> that's kind of also how I ended up with the diet doctor website. And then when I realized people were like, yeah, but but fruit, I was like, screw fruit i don't even eat it anyway i probably yeah. scurvy, so i mean i just basically said no fruit okay whatever i don't really care anyway and um i was already really not having a whole lot of bread and pasta because of the celiac yeah and the, the alternatives are just not as good and so ketosis and keto happened by accident but then it works for me i did dabble with carnivore for a little while mm -hmm. but for me unfortunately and interestingly um i found the carnivore which is supposed to be the most satiating way to eat i actually was overeating mm. so kind of became a problem so i've added more um like low carb veggies back in and that seems yeah. to keep me a little better i tried dairy free keto for over a year yeah um, I kind of like the concept of what, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Mark Sisson. So he's so, Mar um, the primal blueprint. 
Sounds Keto familiar. Tone. Yeah, he has a Keto Reset book and he has uh, some other stuff about Primal. So basically Primal is a happy medium between Keto and Paleo. Okay. I like the idea of eventually when my body is lean, being able to be, as he would call it, in the Keto zone most of the time yeah and then achieve a sort of met metabolic flexibility to enter in and out of higher carb days if i feel like it and i don't want to use the term carb cycling because i don't really feel like that is beneficial or helpful for most people because they're still in the fat loss phase yeah if you're trying to lose fat and you're cycling in in, in and out of high carbs it's not really going to be it's not going to serve you you're just going to constantly be getting back into ketosis but when you're lean and strong and have yeah. an optimal body fat percentage and you're working out i feel like there's room for that so i'd like that to be the end game but for now keto and fasting which happened by accident but it's very yeah. natural it feels good yeah because it's at the end of the day what i tell a lot of people you got to do what works for you and mm -hmm. what and what is making you feel good it might you could trust me it was a process for me too it was like i sort of kind of well sh should i stick around with just uh you know eating particular meals on a particular time frame what works for me under my time frame specifically when before i was working i was trying to figure it out you know the best time frame from actually eat now i like you said you don't eat past six o'clock because obviously you want to kind of stick around with your circadian rhythm um definitely when it gets some good night of sleep so everything that you that you're going to do you're always going to do what works for you and eventually not and, and kind of sort of like feel that uh, it, it, whether you want to have more steak or whether you want to have more chicken so you got to feel <laughs> yeah. that out and stop putting the because i love carbs. and it's not love, always going to be like what i have found since day one is what worked for me in the beginning at 330 pounds is not what worked the next summer and that's not what works this summer what yeah. works right now is not what worked in january when i was post-op so i find there has to be a willingness to always push the limits and think outside the box and try new things i like biohacking mm -hmm. because our bodies are not always going to respond to the same thing we did even a week ago and for females yeah. I mean, men have hormone cycles as well, but yeah. females more so than men have, you know, very strong cycles. And so for women, there's a lot more um, biohacking that has to happen to suit what's going to fuel your body and make you feel best hormonally even throughout the month. Yeah. I was going to ask you, have you uh, think about doing a bit like extended fasting, uh, more like, a, uh, you know, 24 hours, 40 hours, 76, because... We we are, I, I do at least once a month. I do seventy two hour fasting. But for you, have you gonna cross your mind that it's something that you're thinking about actually doing? Yeah, right now I've sort of been pushing the limits more so since about the middle of May um, with more fasting. So I've done one hundred and thirty three hours last week. Um, I did seven days last month. I've been doing some 72s, some 48s, okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've done a, like a seven day in December and I did one last July. So normally I would do them every few months, yeah. but right now I've been trying to toy around with a little bit more fasting focused and then nutritious refeeds yeah. um, and toying with different protocols because I haven't quite hit the nail on the head yet as to what my body's going to respond the best to because sometimes I feel so good that I'm like, I'll just keep fasting. But then my refeeds end up as a disaster and I overeat. So I say, okay, maybe yeah. that's too long. So maybe next time I'll try 72 hours and one day of eating instead of five day fast with two days of eating, but then eat too much. So it's a, it's yes. a tipping point. It's hard. It's, it's hard to find a balance. And I'm also somebody who's still recovering and working on binge eating. And so yeah. Fasting for me heals binge eating. And I think my friend might be watching right now. Hey, Mary, um, hypo keto <laughs> eats. So she pointed out recently to me that the reason I thrive with fasting is because it removes a lot of stress and a lot of guesswork with food. And she's yeah. right. The only thing is, again, finding that balance of fasting the appropriate length of time, followed by eating the appropriate amount of food in the appropriate window. Yeah. Yeah. And that, <laughs> And I, tell, I can relate with that uh, as far as, you know, like 72-hour fasting 
and bench eating. I, I learned, you know, actually you mentioned Matt Lauer. Uh, I think it was, was oh, it, uh, Thomas Lauer. I was going to say yeah. Matt. Uh, Thomas Lauer actually did a, 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 actually a group of 72 hour fasting. He actually put a video on YouTube that you refeeding should be for a person that loves, you know, meat, you know, meat eaters. Um, definitely you should, you know, break your fast with a six to eight ounces of steak. And that will be it. That's, after 72 yeah. hours, you should break up your fast with six to eight ounces. And I'm going to tell you something, it worked perfect for me because I felt like, you know, I was already eating after doing 72 hours. The first thing I was doing, whatever I wanted to grab, or, you know, I was just kind of overdoing it. So then I said to myself, okay, you know what? I'm going to do 72 hours and I'm going to break my fast with this, uh, six to eight ounces of steak. And that will be it for the day. The following day, I feel amazing. I continue doing another about, you know, 18 to 20 hours of fasting. And then I decided to break it with whatever I wanted to. Because right. what, what happens is just a slow process to get your digestion to start, you know, get it back again to the, to the rhythm of things. Um, it was, you know, for me, it was the best option. And I think this, this, this all, for me, was a learning process. And, and I don't, and, you know, I'm glad you mentioned it because a lot of people, need to understand that that whole part of the refeeding has to be a, 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 a learning process. You don't know until you actually try it. It's true. And I know that there are a lot of people who are aware of who Cole Robinson is. He's the snake, snake diet guy. A lot of people don't like yes. him. But I do, <laughs> I do respect a lot of what he says. Even if you eliminate the, the swearing and the crazy talk, if you hear what he's saying, one, one video he talked about yo-yo fasting. And so he said, you know, Anybody can fast, anybody. But if you fast for 30 days straight, good for you. But if you don't know how to eat after that, you've just wasted your time. And he, so he said, what people need to focus on is go through like 20 cycles of short fasts followed by an appropriate refeed. And until you can do that, to not yeah. even bother with the longer ones because you haven't learned the discipline yet. Yes. So it really does come down to a, a very learned discipline on breaking it appropriately yes. and see for me like i've gotten caught up with things like father's day we, <laughs> we over ate here and yeah. then it took me six days to recover from that yes so it just ended up not being worth it well you know th this is the this is the thing i i think that the fact that you that you're saying that it's a learning process you know for anybody especially when i first started 16a uh, the first the first week it was insane because I was so used to eating uh, breakfast a snack lunch a snack and yeah. and that was like you know who you know in my mind I don't want to lose muscle mass in my mind I was I don't want to I don't want to I don't know I'm not gonna starve myself so that was the mindset you know yeah, we about, have to relearn everything yes yes <laughs> and and I thought that you know I because you know I was a personal trainer as an instructor. This is the things that you learn as you, you know, you get, you get your certifications because nutrition is, is such an essential part of it. And you, you know, you were told, hey, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So, you know, it was a, such a slap in the face when I started learning about intermittent fasting, about all this research, about all this information that is available out there. And I was like, man, you know, I, I felt so, um, I don't know. It was just kind of sort of like a, I, I felt like I was not truthful to what it's like to be in the fitness industry. But at the end of the day, I was learning something that definitely is going to be beneficial for everyone, everybody. Because the first thing in my mind you, was. Do you also find like I'm and I'm sorry if I'm assuming incorrectly, but I'm assuming yeah. you are Latin American descent. Yeah. And yes. I mean, do you find that different, um, like even with men and women of Latin American descent? Because I mean, I lived in Honduras for three years and the yeah. concepts around food were much different there. Well, of course, it is different. Now, the only difference is I came in 1992 to the United States, right? So, uh, you know, I was only 16 years old. So I was trying to I'm learning the language and learning everything that had to do culture-wise and everything that had to do with just, mm -hmm. you know, being here. So, but when, it's, when it came down to, because then I remember, you know, I remember my grandmother giving me snacks when I'm playing soccer or Juicy Juice when I was playing soccer. <laughs> I just, just knowing that, that was not something that they were they were doing. Parents do this all the time. They just bring juices and the snacks and all this in the middle of the game. And so snacks was out of the question. We either we either had a breakfast or not breakfast at all. <laughs> and there was lunch and dinner, and that's that was it. So there was not something like food was not something that it was 
uh, necessarily a, a crazy thing that people needed to go through. Uh, but then what we started learning is that, you know, these, the Western diet that, that it was implemented and all these new set of things that it was implemented was coming to South America. But I came in in, a, in sort of kind of sort of the moment of change because 1992, a lot of things I'm pretty sure changed in South America. So it's, it's the same way here in the United States. And, and we, we look back 30 years, 40, 50 years ago, uh, I'm pretty sure in the 70s and the 60s, people didn't have to worry about nutrition intake the way we worry about now because it was, yeah. more, it was so much simple than what it is not more confusing for a lot of people. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, no matter who it is, whether it's your mom or the restaurant, which is the favorite plate that you will, sit in, that will not say no to? Oh, my God. I feel like that's changed a lot. But I like just ground meat, a bowl of ground meat. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Even back when my mom would make a casserole as a kid and – I mean, as a kid, we were told it was inappropriate and that was like bottom feeder meat. And if they were making a casserole that had ground meat, you would always want to steal some of the cooked meat. And it yeah. was so bad. But now it's <laughs> like, I pride myself that my four-year-old daughter wants to eat a bowl of meat. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of, you kind of, kind of, kind of teach them and uh, teach it a little. Uh, or, cho I'm, or chocolate. There's yeah. Chocolate. Yes. Um, what would you say that if you could have spoke to the 16, 17-year-old version of you, what would you say to her? I would tell her that there's a better life out there and it didn't revolve around white bread. <laughs> Just put down the white bread and you're going to feel so much better. I mean, I wish we knew then what we know now about the celiac even. You know, not even yeah. keto, but... I wish we knew that the bread that I ate with every meal was making me very sick in so many ways. Yeah, yeah, like, because Lord, just eat the meat, just eat that bowl of meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yes, I was gonna say, um, not you know, we we dealing with COVID nineteen and and everyone who, uh, how do you feel about this whole this whole change? I mean, no mass, yes mass. Uh, I, you know, at the end of the day. You know, you're, you're, you're out there. If you go out there to the store, I understand you want to wear a mask. But if you're yeah. outdoors, if you go to the beach, if you go into the park, do you need to wear a mask? So um, our province in the eastern part of Canada has done really well at having the lowest of cases in the whole country. Yeah. We don't know how, but we have. Um, they didn't make masks mandatory right away. Now they're urging you to do it. So yeah. if I go into a place where it's required, I put it on. I don't like wearing it, but I will out of respect for others. Um, yeah. As for the gym, they've, they've reopened the gym two weeks ago. You have to wear it if you're in the main corridor or locker room, but you take it off to work out, which if they tried, if they tried to tell me I had to wear it to work out, I just wouldn't go. Yeah. Um, I don't understand the concept of wearing it in public because – I mean, unless you're standing this close to somebody, yeah. I don't really understand why if you're breathing fresh air, you would need one. I don't really go to restaurants, so I don't know what that scene here is like. Yeah. Um, I feel like if something is so congregated that they can't keep people spaced out, they probably just shouldn't even be open anyway just to solve that problem. Yeah. But I've been to many beaches and parks, and it's not required, and we don't wear them here. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, uh, from all, look, I'm in Florida. And yeah, I'm I mean, telling like, you, right now, your situation is, is a nightmare compared to here. Well, I, I, let me tell you something. I was in Miami. <laughs> and I was, I, I personally think that, you know, you, if you're at the beach, you don't need a mask because you're, I mean, the water is salty. It is hot. You, I don't want near, nobody near me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, only, the last thing you, I would understand if you go to the hotel, wear a mask, if you are thinking about going to a bar maybe wear a mask or, or wear, I mean, try to stay a space out, you know, right. but to say that you need to close everything. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I feel like as, as of, you know, a lot of the, the, the people that are getting affected uh, or, or that now that there are more cases because and we're talking about March and March, there was no 
necessarily know, you know they were not testing it here so it was kind of right. kind of weird to now see these numbers going up but at the same time but it's um, relative to the cases of um, tests, right? It's got to be off the it's test, but you got to understand something. Anybody who gets caught with this or anybody who is actually is healthy, and let's, let's separate healthy versus not healthy, right? For example, um, when a person, and, and this is one of the things, say hi to your cat because I see her. <laughs> Uh, I have a cat myself, so I, I know what it's like. I know what it's like. So just think about that, you know, and, and, and a friend who uh, uh, has an Instagram page brought out a great point because, you know, the news tends to target healthy people and say, this 30-year-old healthy woman, you know, she gets covered by teen. She was just completely destroyed. But then you're talking about let's look at healthy because – yeah, you know, they're this... looking at these healthy women, but then they're going on their Facebook pages and seeing <laughs> like their choco chillers and their pizza and their donuts, and then they're saying, "So is she healthy or is she healthy?" Exactly. So uh, this is and this is nothing to to make fun of anybody to no. uh, by all means because you you're entitled to what you want to eat. And I mean, at the end of the day, why, right? So what I think is that the they, they they don't talk about the solution or the prevention. Because they try to scare everyone, right? Yeah, and and the solution is not to lock us back up again. Number one. And I think the other solution is, let's talk about prevention. Let's talk about type 2 diabetes. Let's talk about high blood pressure. Let's talk about these things that are affecting so many people because their immune system is not strong enough. And so I feel, I, you know, as a, as, a, as, a, as a husband, father, I'm concerned because, you know, I don't want to have my 16-year-old kid locked up in the house every single day. I, it, that, that just takes a lot of a mental stress. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> you know, so I think of that. It's so hard. It well, is. and I mean, we've been, we've done our best to maintain safety. I've been the person who this whole time, if my grandmother needs something, I go to the store. If my parents need something, I go to the store. My husband is yes. not only an essential worker, my yeah. husband works at our nearest hospital yeah. in the environmental services department, which means he cleans the droplet rooms. That's what his job is. Okay. So, but, yeah. You know, he has a protocol when he gets home of taking off his uniform yeah. straight to the laundry. He backtracks and sanitizes our home and wherever he's touched. But I mean, since this whole time, he has been going into the hospital and cleaning rooms of people who have come in. Now, we haven't had cases here in our hospital, but they've been tested for them. I yeah. think there's been cases, but no, like, I don't think he's been exposed to them. But that's like that's what he does, you know. But he, he also eats keto. He also intermittent fasts and yeah. he tries to get his eight hours of sleep. He takes his vitamin D3. And I mean, yeah. we're doing our best to metabolically stay healthy and yeah. optimal. And that's... We're doing what we feel we can do. And up until I think two weeks ago, he wasn't required to wear a mask at work. And now he is. Yeah. Only two weeks ago. Yeah. So he has not been wearing a mask this whole time. But then, you know, you know, this is, this is one of a, a kind of a strange and weird because, you know, you know, 10,000 cases in one day and little that, you know, because my cousin is a, is a doctor. And so <laughs> I'm question. I said, like, you know, I, I need to ask you this question. This and this. But then, you know, it's, it's a very small percentage compared to, you know, that, that they actually, that they believe there might be more. But that's because in March, and, but by the end of March and April, there was no testing what's going on in here in Florida. So uh, this is just uh, for people that are kind of sort of worried. And the news doesn't make it any, any easier for anybody. Well, the, the news for us sitting here in St. John, New Brunswick, Canada, makes us look at florida and say what the hell are they doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah everybody's at the beach yeah uh, yeah, yeah. See, we were like see, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you see all this amount of people you know going to the beach swimming i mean it's salt water and it's not trust me i mean <laughs> and as i mean at the end of the day what matters is that what you're doing to prevent it that is going to count the most i mean washing your hands fantastic putting a mask fantastic but then what about your body? What about yourself right. overall? Uh, yeah, that self-awareness. Um, how do you feel about your self-awareness uh, compared three years ago? How do you, 
No. Oh, I was. I feel like I was pretty clueless three years ago. I mean, if I had a problem, I popped a pill. If I had a problem on top of that problem, I popped an over-the-counter pill. And mm. you know, I was just abusing my body. I just even even if there was something that I should have known better, I just I didn't. I took I took my body for granted. I took my life for granted. And I mean, yeah. if you are facing death and you know that obesity and inflammation are one of the biggest factors as to why you're in a hospital bed. You have this sort of lack of self-awareness. It's almost like you have an invincibility thought. Like you just, you don't even think that you could break down. And yeah. So, I mean, I'm much more self-aware of my mind and my body and my thoughts and what I'm doing and how I'm nursing my body, why I'm doing the things I'm doing why I got off the prescriptions I got off of and as quickly as I could, how hormones work. And I don't just mean as a female because I get a period, but I mean like leptin and ghrelin and cortisol. And, you know, I find it all very fascinating now and I like to learn a lot. Yeah, because, uh, you know, that's that's part of the one of the things that I tell a lot of people when they ask me a question about intermittent fasting or fasting, I say, look, I'm going to give you homework to do because I want you to understand this process. Yeah. Not, not, because, not because I don't want to tell you more. It's because I want you to, you know, kind of sort of understand that um, this process is going to take a little bit of you doing some homework and then understanding this process because then, but what time should I break the fast? Why should I break with the fast with? <laughs> and so yeah. all these questions come up. Should I sleep? I mean, like, of course, you know, so there's so many The one things. that kills me is, uh, <laughs> the, one, the one that always kills me is, well, can I still brush my teeth? Yes, please brush your teeth. <laughs> please brush your teeth. You're not eating your toothpaste. You're good. Yes, yes. And this is one of the things, uh, that's one, actually one of my first questions when I, or then first did my first extended fast, should I be brushing my teeth? <laughs> and well, and now I've started to actually be curious and I'm doing some more research and learning a, bit, a little bit more about dry fasting and where it can yeah. have a role. And so there's so many subsets on that to soft dry fasting and hard dry fasting. It's just like, yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so much different. Yeah. Um, I, and I think you, I, th I can tell you that uh, friends that I, that I'm friends with that they do dry fasting and that normally, you know, they're, they're from the Muslim religion. Um, they, they definitely they don't nothing whatsoever from sunset right. uh some from so, sunrise to sunset right. yeah nothing and i'm just like i do uh, not even a drop of water is like no and so that's a little bit different that automatically gets into ketosis so quick yeah. because you literally now have now that i will say that there's something that you can practice uh it has completely different effects in your body but then you got to remember when you break your fast, it's got to be very, very, you have to be very careful because yeah. it has a lot of things. Because I, I've seen them eat and I know it's just pure carbs. And yeah. I, <laughs> they don't eat, they feast. Yes, they <laughs> feast after, you know, sunset. And I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, I don't, are you sure you're supposed to be having that? You know, that is slice of pizza. <laughs> so um, quick question. And, and, and I wanted to kind of sort of, uh, um, ask you in regards of the, the this this now the the stephanie now what do you see going from from this point on now um a lot of people ask me and they've been asking me all along if i will coach i still don't know um mm -hmm. i'm almost <laughs> almost certified in two different fitness classes at our local ymca yeah so all i have to do is present my practicum for the aquafit yeah so I want to get into a little bit of fitness coaching. Yeah. Um, I help a lot of people and I've had people come and have coffee in my living room to help them and talk to them about their health. But I don't know if I want to get into it in a per profit venue, just because going back to what you said about giving people homework, my experience has been that people don't want to do homework. They just no. want you to tell them what to do. <laughs> Yeah, and, and even though I've had people say to me, "Yeah, but if they're willing to pay you for that, take the money and run," I can't. I just I can't do that in good conscience. So I'll continue to help people for free, um, and I'd like to do some fitness coaching. And I yeah. am lining up with a a fitness center to do a little bit of admin work, which I've done in the past. 
Yeah. So for now, I am a stay-at-home mom, but I would like to still work in some capacity with a fitness place. But you know, like of course, you know, you're teaching classes. I know, I know what you're saying because when I first started it, uh, teaching classes, I wanted to do it for free. But then, what was the point for me actually teaching? <laughs> and so, yeah. and so, it it took it takes some time because you kind of sort of like in my mind. When I first got certified for being an instructor, in my mind was like, I, I didn't feel like I was an instructor, but I had the certifications, I had the, you know, the classes and all the routines. But then after my first, second class, third class, I started noticing that I was the one leading, you know, the class, and I was the one, you know, uh, you know, going through this whole process with your, with your classmates. Because what happens is. It, the idea is that you're you're trying to understand what they're going through mm -hmm. because you know it's not necessarily just the overall trying to lose the weight. I think it's a lot the the connection, the relationship that that makes the connection for the long term. Because I think shortcuts don't get you anywhere. I think uh, that long term commitment, that long term relationship, uh, to me means the world to me. Because you know, I, I ask you you know, come in, share a little bit of your journey because I think a lot of people, everybody's different, you know, everybody comes from different countries or from different backgrounds. Your journey's, you know, just amazing because I think that, you know, somebody else is struggling, they don't think they can do it and then they see you, why you have come, you know, in three years, they're like, wow, if, you know, if she can do it, I can do it too. And so, um, what would you say that that you that you wish? You, I mean, I know you wish you should know back then, but you know that now that is is now more 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 like a how do I say? It? It's more like a you're now it you're you're yeah, not only do you build in that confidence, but you know now that are and this and this and this journey has taken you to to a, a different level now. Where is it that? That is Stephanie now, not just being self-aware, but <laughs> now that is going to to get to the next level. <clears throat> I, I just my my thirst for knowledge and willingness to always learn, I think, is going to help me whether it's just being a good person, helping people for free because I want to, or if ever I want it to align with somebody who's certified and maybe work in a certified coaching setting I just I want to help people but I want to be part of this whole I don't want to say game but I want to be part of this team effort of people I have followed and gained wisdom from I want to be somebody that other people gain wisdom from as well yeah. going forward like I never want to stop learning but I want to also be a trailblazer and have you know the simple stay-at-home mom from next door see my story and message yeah. me and say oh my gosh how do I start doing what you do and be able to transform their life? They are actually the one transforming their life, but to be that catalyst with them is yes. so empowering, you know? Yes. You go to bed at night knowing that you made a difference. And that's the, that's the most important thing in, in the whole world. I mean, to me, bringing you here, you know, on this platform and, and, and somebody can see what you have done and they say, where can I connect with her? Where can I you know, uh, talk to her, can, can she, you know, can she give me a few tips and stuff like that? At the end of the day, to me, that's... Worth. And I mean, on Instagram, it's more of like glimpses every day. But if anybody goes through my bio on here and goes over to my Facebook page, anytime mm -hmm. I write a note, it stays on there. So like I have one that's called a uh, guide for, a uh, resource guide for fasting and keto. And it mm -hmm. has links and profiles of people to follow, videos to watch. I have one about sheets versus treats. I yeah. have one um, that talks about setting intentions versus setting goals. I have uh, Dr. Fung um, archives listed there. So, I mean, there's always stuff on my Facebook page, too, that people can come back to and save and read and refresh on. Because um, Facebook is a larger platform to save that kind of information. So, you know, anytime I have an idea like that and I write it out, I'll, it, it stays up there. I was going to ask you, um, where, if this is, a, if this is a question that I always ask to everyone in the podcast is, 
if you were to go to a country, what country would you go and you know you're going to be okay? Honduras. Honduras? I lived there for three years. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I, I know Honduras because obviously I, I went through, I went, when I came to the United States, I was in Panama, I was in, I was in Costa Rica, you know, just to know these countries and, and, and Honduras. How is the food over there? Um, honestly, it's kind of bland. Like they have frijoles and, and, uh, but I didn't find things spicy or like until you go to Guatemala, it's quite simple, like good food, but quite simple, like avocado, fried eggs, fried chicken, street, like my like carne asada. Yeah. You know, um, but very simple palate. Um, but I liked it. I liked it. I like eating frijoles every day and tortillas. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's South America. I mean, they, they do have, I know for sure they do have uh, tra very traditional foods and, and, and especially in Honduras and all these countries. I really miss baleadas. I don't know if you know what they are. Well, go ahead. I'm, I'm um, not. The baleada in Honduras. So it's just a tortilla de arena and then they put the um, frijoles yeah they, 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 yeah and then they have mantequilla but it's not like butter here and it's not sour cream i don't even know what it is they call it mantequilla but i don't know what it is <laughs> and then parmesan cheese sometimes they put scrambled eggs in it and then just fold it over but it's just so good so good well no you know every country has that specialty thing that you know like you know, in my country, we talk about ceviche, and we talk about lomo saltado. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of foods that definitely trust me. I know a lot of people that, you know, have gone to my country, you know, they probably see uh, Peru. Oh, okay, I'm from Peru. Okay. So, okay, so we have a few more minutes. I wanted to, where can people find you? Because in my podcast, I want to make sure, obviously, the Instagram, uh, where can people find you? So... My Instagram and my Facebook are the same name, Steph Falopagus. <laughs> so it's a, a hybrid between Snuffleupagus on the Sesame Street and me. <laughs> so Steph Falopagus and Facebook.com, Steph Falopagus, same thing. Most times it's sort of the same information, but I do add sometimes more content on Facebook. Okay, okay. So then so people can be able to find you on Facebook. I will have the links available on the for the podcast and for here and on Instagram. I'm gonna have uh, her link on Instagram. I just wanna, um, I want to leave this uh, podcast, this live broadcast um, in regards, what kind of question will you ask to the fasting community that you would like to live or, you know, give a take on, you know, what we like to live to anyone who wants to come in and, you know, connect with you. So what am I going to ask people? Yeah, all, you know, people can ask you. Anyway, I mean, literally, I am like, I'm like an open book. Mm -hmm. um, if people, especially I encourage people who are coming at a place of, you know, life at 300 pounds or more and feeling like it's just not conceivable that they could get that weight off. Definitely feel free to reach out to me privately on either Facebook or Instagram. And you yeah. can ask me how to get started and how fasting can have its place in your life, even if you're terrified to go more than five hours without eating. Um, just ask me and don't be afraid and don't think that any question is either too silly or too personal. If you want to ask me questions about fasting and food, go for it. Yeah. Anyway. And, that's, and that's, yes, anything. And I think that having that kind of sort of open door uh, can help some can help so many people uh, Stephanie thank you so much for taking the time to do in this one hour I know you have you know family things going on and so many things going on but I want to so grateful and thankful for, for that for that opportunity giving us and kind of learn from you and uh, your little bit of the journey that you have gone through it's amazing what you have done and I'm pretty sure that people who is going to watch this video people are going to listen to the podcast you know I, I just look forward to you know, help another life and, and you know, the long term of this commitment uh, to help, you know, our fellow human beings. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. Take care. You too.
Bye. Bye. Bye.